Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of No DQ and A video right here on youtube.com slash no DQ CAW. And as always, no DQ.com, your source for the very latest in WWE and TNA. Let's not waste any more time, let's get right down to your questions. This first one comes from Nasserum A Dreams. Given the fact that The Rock will likely win at the Royal Rumble, is Cena the odds on favorite to win the Rumble match? I do think that there's a good possibility John Cena will win the Royal Rumble this year. It's an easy build for WrestleMania. The Rock wins the WWE title. John Cena wins the Royal Rumble. He challenges The Rock at WrestleMania, the rematch uh, that some people want to see, some people don't want to see. But um, that seems to be uh, the easiest way to go in WWE now. They could always go in a different direction uh, depending on how they feel um, the general public knows the plans for WrestleMania. Do the fans know too much already? Does WWE want to do something unpredictable and, and change it up a little bit? Um, WWE definitely has um, different ways they could go with this. You know, you have Elimination Chamber and um, you have that pay-per-view where you could um, have seen a not win the Rumble and then win a match at that pay-per-view and then get the title shot. Uh, the other uh, the other possibility for the Royal Rumble is um, besides Cena winning, I could also see Randy Orton winning. You know, Randy Orton hasn't really done a whole lot in the past year. Uh, he, he hasn't uh, been at that top level that he's been in previous years. So uh, winning the Royal Rumble this year would be huge for Randy Orton. It would get get, get him back on track and uh, jumpstart his career again. Um, and, you know, especially if he turns heel, um, winning the Rumble would, would uh, get him over as a heel again if uh, he, in fact, turns heel at the Royal Rumble or before the Rumble. But, um, yeah, I could I could see either Cena or Orton winning the Royal Rumble at this point, um, but you never know. You never know what WWE has planned, and if they think something's too predictable, they could um, always go in a different direction. This one comes from Matt D. Wise. Please answer in video. Aaron, in in your opinion, who had the best debut in wrestling history? Uh, no doubt about it. For me, I would have to say Chris Jericho when he came into WWE. In um, August 1999, the big Y2J debut, um, I I cannot tell you how uh, how much that meant when he came out there. I mean, I had goosebumps. It was uh, unbelievable when he came out, and I, I loved that debut so much because um, Chris Jericho had uh, just been a mid card guy in WCW, and um, you know people were hoping he would go to WWE and WWE would do something with him. And uh, he came out, and in one night, he was a major superstar. WWE did more with Chris Jericho in one night than WCW did in uh, three, four years that they had him. It was just incredible. And, um, you know, when, when the Y2J flashed on the screen and the crowd popped, I mean, I got chills. It was, it was um, one, of the, one of the greatest moments in Raw history. This one comes from Mr. Sep EV. Hey Aaron, what did what do you think of the Billy Graham rant on Facebook about CM Punk? You know, I think that um, Billy Graham's just saying these things to uh, to get his name out there and try to stay in the spotlight. You know, when, when you've been a superstar for so many years and then you fall out of the limelight, you you miss it. And I think for some of these guys, um, when they see an opportunity to um, draw attention and get people talking about them again, they'll they'll take advantage of it. And I think that that's what Billy Graham does. I think that. When there's a hot topic, he um, he comes out from the shadows and and uh, gets back in, back into the uh, limelight. Um, and I, I don't really uh, I don't I don't think he's serious, you know. I think he's just working everybody. I I really don't think he's that crazy. I mean, he he knows better than anybody uh, what it's like to be a, a heel getting heat. And I mean, that's all CM Punk was doing was um, just trying to draw heat. He has nothing against Bruno San Martino or anybody that came before him he's just doing what a good heel does and you would think that that Billy Graham would understand that so I'd be really surprised if if uh, he was 100% uh, serious with his rants this one comes from Lima Head 7 Aaron if you were offered a wrestling contract and told you can pick three of your own trainers who would they be and why two for me would D would be Dean Malenko and William Regal cheers from Ireland you know, everybody loves Dean Malenko and William Regal as workers. You know, they're workhorses. They're great technical wrestlers. But I think that if I'm going to have trainers, I'm going to want guys with uh, with all the attributes. You know, not just guys that are great in the ring, but guys that can talk, guys that know how to entertain people, know how to connect with the audience. Um, so when I look at guys with um, all the attributes, somebody who can do everything, you know, top of the list is uh, no doubt Shawn Michaels. I mean, Shawn Michaels has done it all. 
and um, he, he knows what to do, you know, in the ring, on the mic, um, knows what to do as an entertainer overall. So, I mean, Shawn Michaels and um, Kurt Angle, same thing. Kurt Angle has all the attributes. He can wrestle, he can talk, um, he can be an entertainer, he can do it all. And then uh, the third guy, Chris Jericho. I would go Shawn Michaels, Kurt Angle, Chris Jericho. This is from John 316. Hey, Aaron, in 2003, WWE gave Goldberg a one-year contract deal. But unlike The Rock and Lesnar, he was on Raw and pay-per-views the whole year. Why won't WWE find someone to return like that and actually be on full-time schedule the whole year? Please answer on video. Well, I can tell you that WWE uh, would love to have Brock Lesnar on a full-time basis, but you know Brock Lesnar is not going to budge. He does not want to work a full-time schedule. That's why he left the company in the first place. And I guess uh, the call was made to uh, sign him to a part-time deal because they felt that there was some value in him. You know, he was just coming off his huge run in the UFC. He was a, a major uh, um, household name. You know, he, he he made a huge impact in UFC and. Uh, WWE felt they could sign him and do a few big matches with him and, and draw a lot of money. And, you know, um, he came in, he had the match with Cena, did a better buy rate than usual. Um, the match with Triple H at SummerSlam did a better buy rate than usual. And uh, they feel they can market him for WrestleMania. You know, he's on the poster. And, um, you know, they're, they're, um, they can still get money out of him even if he's not wrestling full-time. But trust me, if, if they could sign him to a full-time deal, they, they absolutely would. This one comes from X Bonker ZZ. Hey Aaron, love the show. Seeing as Ric Flair has made a, a few appearances on Raw the last couple weeks, do you think he would be a surprise entrant in the Royal Rumble match? Also, could we possibly see Undertaker return at number 40 and win the Rumble? Well, uh, last I heard it was a 30-man Rumble. Um, as far as Undertaker coming back and winning the Rumble, um, slim to none. Don't see that happening. Um, don't think we'll be seeing uh, Undertaker until... Uh, February, once uh, the WrestleMania build really gets into high gear. Um, and same thing with Ric Flair. I mean, he's he's not going to be wrestling again. WWE does not want him wrestling again. Especially, you know, um, first of all, because of the whole retirement, you know, they, they made a huge deal out of his retirement. And they don't want to go back on that. And the other reason is, you know, with Jerry Lawler having the heart attack, WWE doesn't want to have um, these older guys doing too much physical in the ring. I mean, him, him giving uh, Antonio Cesaro a couple of chops, that's fine and dandy, and but that's as much as they want to do with him uh, physically. Um, so him being in the Rumble um, just isn't going to happen. This one comes from Tommy C 21 Hey Aaron, love the show, now it's my question. I read a report on TMZ that Hulk Hogan is suing his back surgeon for $50 million in result, ruining his match with John Cena. How do you think that, that match would have played out booking and result-wise? Well, first of all, I want to know how he came up with that 50 million number. I mean, uh, I, I'm not sure how, how he came up with that. And, um, you know, I'm sure if WWE had a match with um, Hulk Hogan versus John Cena, it would have done huge business. It, 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 it um, almost certainly would have done better than what WrestleMania 25 ended up doing. Um, but I don't know if he would have made anything close to that. Now, it's possible they would have kept him around and uh, gave him like a Legends deal or something and he'd be general manager or any number of things. And maybe he would have made, um, you know, several million dollars. But $50 million? I don't know about that. Um, and you ask, like, how how that would have played out. I mean, I think that it would have been an easy decision. You know, John Cena has to go over. He's the uh, current superstar in Hulk Hogan's the past. Um, and, yeah, they, they could have had Cena win and then had Hogan uh, do some sort of, um, you know, non-wrestling role, like general manager or something like that. Um so yeah, that that's my thoughts on that question. But yeah, I'm still I'm baffled by that 50 million figure. Hey Aaron, the June pay per view for this year is still TBA. What are the chances that we will see the return of King of the Ring event on um, pay per view? I'm not sure. I haven't really heard anything uh, definite regarding the June pay per view yet. Um, my personal opinion, I would love to see the King of the Ring return. I think that um, that pay per view. Um, has, a, has always uh, had a lot of intrigue, and I think that um, it's something unique. You know, you do a one-night tournament once a year. The winner uh, gets a title shot at SummerSlam. I just think it, it's, a, it's a good concept, and um, it, it really gets over SummerSlam, too. You know, you, you have the winner uh, challenge a champion at SummerSlam. So 
Um, I, I love to see the pay-per-view back. It was one of my all-time favorite gimmick pay-per-views, um, especially when they, they had, um, you know, solid performers in there. And, you know, they, they have a strong roster, so you can put in a lot of big names, and uh, it would be a really good pay-per-view, I think, in, in terms of um, the matches, and the matches would be really good. So I'm all for bringing back King of the Ring. Will it come back? Don't know at this point. All right, that'll do it for this edition of No DQ and a video. Um, so yeah, stay tuned to NoDQ.com for all the latest regarding the Royal Rumble, and I'll see you next time for more No DQ and a video.